um, I'm sorry, but your life might change just a slight bit. I don't know why I'm smiling so hard because it wasn't easy. If I get anything lower than a 78, that's failing. It's to fail. So, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Kaya. Hey guys. Okay, so basically I just wanted to finally post a video about what I'm going to school for, which is radiology, or a lot of people know it as x-ray tech. Um, so if you guys are interested in seeing the ins and outs of x-ray and everything like that or more information about radiology and stuff, make sure you stay tuned for this video, guys. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. Let's get it. So basically, on my handy dandy phone, I have, um, just some things that I want to talk to you guys about. So the first thing that I'm going to start off with is my specific program and then the next thing I'm going to talk about is the application process and then the third thing I'm going to talk about is my first semester, how it went and give you guys some advice if this is something that you're looking into. As far as my program, it is 22 months so I started June, the end of June 2021 and then I'll finish May 2023. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm going into my third semester. So this spring semester that we're about to go through right now will be my third semester. After that, then I'll be considered a second year student. My program offers me an associate's degree. So I know with some programs that are accelerated, they do offer you a bachelor's degree, but mine is an associate's degree. So another thing I would like to mention, regardless of where the program is, now each program is different. So my program might be different than a program that they have they offer in Atlanta or a program that they offer in Houston or something like that. But regardless of the program that you're in, please, 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 please just make sure that it is accredited through the J-R-C-E-R-T. It's very, very long and I don't know what it stands for, but it is an accreditation so that you know you can freely take your license to any state and it just helps it just helps the process be so much smoother when you're looking for jobs and everything like that another thing is that my program specifically is very 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 competitive um we are the only program in probably i would say maybe in like a 60 mile radius maybe maybe 60 mile radius that is accredited. So a lot of people are trying to get in this program from multiple states. And uh, with that being said, it is competitive. So I believe in the summer they accepted maybe like 30 something people. And then when the program actually started, it was about 23 people that made it to the fall semester so depending on the clinical hospitals that they have available that is how they base how many people they will accept every um, school year um, we do they accept every year so technically I still am the first year student but when the second year students graduate in May then I'll be a second year student they'll be accepting first year students again now let's go to the application process as far as the application process let me just explain a little bit of how this goes because I know a lot of people have questions about this it depends on the school and how your prereqs work with your program now for me specifically the only two prereqs that my school required me to have done before I started the program was English and math now we have to take though seven prereqs in total so we have to take English and math, um, psychology, anatomy, physiology, one and two, medical terminology, and we have to take two more. The other two, I can't remember. But, like I said, the only two that you need to have done is English and math for my program. But that does mean while you're in the program, you will be taking those other five prereqs, which is extremely, extremely, extremely difficult so I would recommend finishing all your prereqs before you get into the program now with that that will add some extra time onto your degree or how long you're in school for so now for me for instance it took me two semesters to finish seven prereqs which is actually 
kind of unheard of because that's a lot. I took five classes one semester and two classes the second semester. So I had two semesters that's basically like a year in school. So um, technically I'll be in this program for three years, including my prereqs. So how my school did it was we didn't have interviews or anything like that. Now previously, I believe the class of 2020 did have to do interviews, but I believe they stopped that. So now we take a test and then, which is like common sense situations, critical thinking, things like that. A little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of math. And then um, after we took that, they, you know, they consider our grades from our fall semester and then they also consider our GPA from our fall semester. So I would definitely ask the director of the program, what specifically do you look at when you're going through the application process so that you know exactly what you need to focus on um, prior to getting accepted into the program or prior to you actually putting in your application. So now let's actually, actually get into, I don't know why I'm smiling so hard because it wasn't easy, but let's actually get into my first semester. So technically my full first semester was my fall semester, which thankfully I passed and got through. But it wasn't easy by any means. In this program, for my program specifically, and I've heard of other x-ray programs that are like this, my 78, if I get anything lower than a 78, that's failing. It's to fail. So in order to pass every class, you have to pass it with a 78 or higher. Um, so that was definitely something that I had to get used to. And I got used to it, <laughs> you know, after a while, I definitely get, did get used to it. So from my experience, we only really got grades from our tests and quizzes. So if you do bad on one quiz, it's like, okay, why did my grade drop so much, you know? So really, really take your tests and quizzes very, very serious. You will have to study a lot. You will. You will have to study a lot. Um, that's something that you have to set in your brain before you even get accepted into the program. You have to come to that realization before you put in your application is if you're not willing to put in the effort and study for this, then it's, it's very difficult to progress and grow in the program if, you know, you're not willing to study for it. I also want to talk about my clinical experience. So I know for me personally, nobody told me that I would have to go to surgery as a x-ray technologist. I had no idea that I would have to go to surgery and I'm the type of person, I faint if I get my ears pierced. So I was kind of going crazy and didn't know what I was going to do exactly when I had got sent to surgery. But after the first time that you get sent, um, you get more comfortable with it. It's not as bad as you think it is. It's very few operations or surgeries in the OR that you will see where it's just like full blown, horrible horror story or something that you see on the TV. Most of it is just, you know, subtle procedures, even when they're working on the spine, like the cervical or the lumbar or something like that. In those cases, you don't see everything, or you don't see just like blood just everywhere, all over the place. So once you get that first surgery experience, then you start getting used to it, and you're like, okay, it's not as bad as I thought it was. It actually can be, mm, maybe not fun, it can be very interesting to watch, you know, the surgeons and the surgical techs and things like that. And then also how the x-ray technologist that you're with in surgery operates the CR and all that good stuff. Also for your clinical experience, like I said, it can be nerve-wracking, but I would just say use all your resources that you have. So in situations or some clinical sites, you can talk to a technologist that has been there for a while, ask them questions, even talk to recent graduates that might have graduated from your program that's at that clinical site uh doing things like that will definitely help you get more comfortable please don't be afraid to ask questions so don't be worried about clinicals as much as you probably are worried about clinicals it's definitely easier said than done but i promise you once you go through it and you experience it everything will be better 
So, you definitely have to be prepared for a change in your social life. That I 100% believe. A lot of people say that for the next two years or however long your program will be, your your life will be put on hold or you know you won't be able to do everything that you want to do and I do agree you will not be able to do everything that you want to do but I also think that there is a balance that is needed um so you might not have the same social life that you had previous or before the program but there is a option and a possibility for you to still have a social life and be in a program um, I do think that it's points in time in this program where you just got to be like, okay, I need a break. I need to breathe. I need to go out. I need to enjoy my life because if you don't, then you can't really rejuvenate and like bring yourself back down and calm back down. So I know for me, for my first semester, I made sure as a priority that I spent time around people that I loved and family and friends and laughed and just enjoy my time just because that really did help me the next week in school or something like that and it helps me to stay more focused but that's just me personally speaking now in general overall your social life probably will change if you're a person that's going out every 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 week or you know you're doing this and you're doing that and you're going to the Bahamas and you're going to Mexico and Cancun and all that stuff um I'm sorry, but your life might change just a slight bit, but that's only for two years. And then after those two years, girls start using that passport again because you're going to be set and you're going to be good. So it can be very, very, very difficult to have a job. With that being said, it will be difficult if you need to have a part-time job and go to a full-time uh, school, go to school full-time. But the thing with that is, it's definitely doable. I see it be done. It's people that have done it and have graduated successfully. I know of some stories where people just saved up a lot and worked, worked, worked their butt off before they got accepted into the program or the summer before. And they just saved up their money and, you know, they wanted to see where that would take them versus trying to work and go to school. So for my first semester, what I did was I picked up a couple of shifts. So I believe I picked up maybe maybe four or five shifts during the full first semester. As far as like an actual job, I personally thought it was best for me not to work. Um, and I believe that that did help me to focus on focus more so on the program and then another topic that I do want to talk about is please prioritize self-care so whether that be just you know taking out an hour and a half to work out real quick or taking out hours to do a face mask or do your hair or something like that something that makes you feel good because I promise you that will help you perform better in your program if you're taking care of yourself so let's do like a summary and like overall so overall my first full semester of radiology school i would give it about i would probably give it a six out of ten and this is why i say that just more so because that is the semester that i really think i just got my feet wet and i was just really getting into it and things like that i did not start off the semester as strong as i needed to and so that's why i'm telling you guys this right now because i want you to avoid some of the mistakes that i did um, so definitely I would say, you know, start off the semester strong, please stay confident and positive and optimistic while you're in this program because negativity will just eat you alive, but please just keep trying, please keep trying, go all the way until you can't go anymore, you know, study as much as you can, but do not burn yourself out because then you're not really learning, you're just reading. Please, please, please do not let clinicals freak you out or scare you just do things go for it don't think about it if somebody asks you hey you want to take an x-ray of a foot and you can do it like your teacher tell you can do it take it you know if you got fluoro um that's something that we do as well fluoroscopy anything like that if you're um 
helping with the procedure where everything is sterile and they ask you to help you open packages as long as you know how to do it do it anything that you can do hands-on experience make sure that you do it so it's a lot to get used to it definitely is but once you get comfortable with it you will be comfortable with it and it will get easier so also guys i do want to do a q a for you about x-ray school so make sure you leave me some comments in my community tab you can also go to kaya's pics and dm me some questions i'll put up a poll even if you guys want to ask me some questions about it because i really do want to make sure that you know the questions that you guys have if you're interested in this program or this career that those questions get answered for you so guys i think i'm gonna go ahead and so guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and finally close out this video. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.